Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Year, New Career with PA Career Link. Uh, my name is Victoria Rogers. I'm with the Scranton uh, Chamber. And we have Liz uh, Razimas here with us. She's uh, the career advisor trainer at PA Career Link. So we're just looking for new ways to promote yourself in going back into the workforce or you know, starting a new job into the workforce. So Liz, thank you so much for being with us and um, go ahead with your presentation. Thank you so much, Victoria. And thank you so much for the chambers for having me today. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Victoria said, my name is Liz Recibus. I do work here at your local PA Career Link in Lackawanna County on Franklin Avenue. I am a career advisor. Uh, and today's presentation is New Year, New Career. That's the PA Career Link stamp for 2022. Um, and this presentation is maximizing your potential in the workforce. Uh, the webinar is going to help job seekers new and mature in maximizing your potential in today's workforce. These tools are going to assist you, the job seeker, in ensuring that they stand out and realize your worth in today's labor market. So today I'm gonna to discuss techniques on updating a resume. As you can see here in the agenda, there's a couple of bullet points um, on what I'm gonna be discussing. Uh, so we're gonna talk about techniques on updating a resume and techniques on finding and applying to the perfect career or job. So let's start with techniques on updating a resume. First thing to remember is there's a few types of different resumes that are out there. Everybody normally jumps in and goes right into either a chronological resume or a functional. They don't realize that there's also a combination resume. So a chronological resume starts by listing out your work history beginning with your most recent position first, and, oops, sorry, lost my place there. <laughs> beginning with your most recent position first and continuing in reverse chronological order, employers typically prefer this type of resume because they can easily scan what jobs you've held, when you've held them, and what you've accomplished there. Chronological resumes benefit job seekers with a strong work history. Next, is the functional resume. A functional resume focuses more on the skills you have acquired rather than listing the positions you've held. You may wanna consider a functional resume if you're a new graduate without much professional experience or if you have a noticeable gap in your work history. Finally, the combination resume. A combination resume is a mix between a chronological resume and a functional resume. At the top of the resume is a list of one's skills and qualifications. Below is one's chronological work history. With this type of resume, you can highlight the skills you have that are relevant to the job you're applying for, as well as provide your chronological history. Next is resume review and updates. What does your objective say about you? So your objective shouldn't necessarily be a point of you requesting something from the employer. For example, to obtain, interested in, looking for. It should be your primary selling point to the position. The who, the knowledge, the why. You want to explain who you are. Brief the employer on your knowledge and finally tell them why you'd be the perfect candidate for the position. Keynote in this is always mention the position. This is especially helpful for positions that do not require a cover letter. And as we've noticed more recently, a lot of jobs that are out there are not asking directly for cover letters. Cover letters have more or less become an obsolete tradition. Next, we're gonna talk beat the bots. How to stand out in the application tracking system. And a lot of people don't know that ATSs exist, which is the applicant tracking system. What that is, is basically these companies utilize a software program that pulls in your application and reviews it for specific keywords. It looks for things that match the job application, knowledge, um, experience, your education. So keep your experience listed to the last 10 years relevant to the position. 
I know a lot of us think, okay, I need to put every single job that I have ever had in my life on this resume. No, absolutely not. Keep it relevant to the position. And the last 10 years you've been in employment. If you're applying for a sales job, but worked in a factory for the last 10 years, make sure that you're listing the qualifications that are streamlined to the new position. So what have you done in the last 10 years that's matching what you're applying for? Spell out acronyms. This is important because we believe if we're applying for a job, the individual looking at the resume should know the job they are hiring for. It isn't always true and in turn, the resume may go through an applicant tracking system first, which is designed to look for keywords, not acronyms, as many of the same acronyms can mean different things. Um, for example, if you look at a CSL, so that could be a chief of staff officer or a customer service officer. So if you're not spelling those out, the applicant tracking system is not going to recognize it. Utilize keywords but don't overdo it. Pull the job description, review your resume, and find where specific keywords in the job description may replace words on your resume to help you stand out with the applicant tracking system. But don't go overboard. Most applicant tracking systems are designed to catch fraudulent resumes. And if there are too many matching words in your resume to a job posting, you may be rejected on that alone. Next, I want to talk about the standards of a resume, the golden rules for a resume. The golden rules to a resume should follow two pages max in length. That does not mean that it has to be two pages, but in reality, it shouldn't be any more than two pages. Use a simple font like Times New Roman. Set the size to 11 or 12 point font. Bold the headings to make them stand out. Grammar, grammar, grammar. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, if you're slewed with grammatical errors in your resume, automatically I can tell you that an employer is not going to want to go any further with you. There is a wonderful application that I can suggest that I utilize myself, and it's called Grammarly. I absolutely love it. I have it connected to almost all of my applications and it goes through whatever I'm typing or whatever I'm writing and helps me correct the grammar because I can tell you my brain works faster than my hands. <laughs> and then finally, leave some white space so the pages aren't crowded with text. Now, the reason I wanted to have this image though on the PowerPoint here is because this right here is a bad example of a resume. This resume, you know, some of it's good, some of it's bad. If you look at the font, an applicant tracking system is automatically going to reject this. Um, don't really go out and about with your resume. Don't overdo your resume. Keep it simple, keep it clear, keep it concise. Next is references. Who are your references? Depending on the job description, a resume may not need references. Make sure you read the job description fully before proceeding with the next bit of advice. Most employers will not reach out to a reference until after the interview. The reason for this is time. If the employer has, was to spend time reaching out to every reference for every applicant that applies, they would end up wasting more time than spending it on candidates they know they want. In turn, at the bottom of your resume, you can simply state references available upon request. And then make sure you have on hand at the interview, a list of references that are available. Yet, if a job application does require references on a resume, a few golden rules to follow would be one personal, two professional or academic, and then always have the professions for your, res your references on hand, as well as a contact phone number and an email if available. 
It's one thing that I do with job seekers when they come into the office. We build out their resume and right at the bottom, as long as the job description is not requiring references immediately, we just put that they're available on request and we create a different document as it shows here on the slide point, name of the reference, what their title may be, the name of the company that they work for, telephone number and an email address. Finally, let's talk file type. And a lot of people don't discuss this when it comes to resumes or when it comes to different types of um, applications. If you are applying directly to an individual rather than an online posting, the best file type is always going to be a PDF. You want to make sure you're saving your resume as a PDF then. This, is not, this not only protects the document from accidentally being edited by the individual opening and reading the resume, but it also shows a little knowledge of how to use basic computer skills. If you are applying to a posting online, the best file type is Word or DocX. This allows the AI system to accurately scan your keywords and if an online job application has any pre-population options, it will allow the AI system to pull the information more accurately. A Word document is also a great tool if an online application asks for a resume and then asks you to still fill out an application in the process to finish. This way you have it pulled up, it's sitting on your computer, and when you're filling out that application, all you have to do at that point is copy and paste. Are there any questions? I feel like I'm going a little fast and that's probably because, you know, my breakfast was an energy drink this morning. <laughs> so next I'm gonna talk about techniques on finding and, apply and applying to the perfect career or job. The big thing, the first thing I wanna talk about is employment boards. Why can't everything just be in one place? Many job seekers will automatically navigate to popular job boards such as Indeed or LinkedIn, which don't get me wrong, they're absolutely wonderful job boards and they do list quite a bit of employment in the local area. But then they get discouraged because they're not seeing a lot of postings or receiving a lot of responses. Many employers will try and avoid over posting jobs due to cost. That is why it's important to branch out and utilize job boards monitored by the county, state, even federal entities. Many of those job boards are free for employers to use. And if they are monitored, they avoid the chances of a job seeker being scammed. I can tell you there are multiple times where I have directed people to the PA career link job board, people have no idea that exists. I've told people about the chambers having their own job board. I've explained to people that Lackawanna County, if you go right on their website, they have a job board. Um, so again, don't be afraid to utilize multiple job boards because employers are not always going to post where you might immediately navigate to because of cost. Job search. Don't let job titles limit your job search. Don't confine your online job search to your current job title or the job title in which you want. Rather than simply typing in the job title, think about using specific skills that will help you define and target your search. Many employers will list the same job description, but with a different title depending on the industry. For example, if you work in construction, but are looking for a foreman type position, you might search the specifics to a foreman position in the construction industry, rather than just construction foreman. I can tell you personally, I have worked with a job seeker and that's where this example comes from. He was looking specifically on multiple job boards for a foreman position and didn't realize that different employers are going to list that job under a different title. Eventually, we were able to find him a site supervisor position that matched the exact job title of what a construction foreman was doing. 
he just never realized of branching out on the title and actually searching for what his qualifications were. Next, I wanna discuss networking. Networking is the key to success. Networking is one of the most effective job search strategies available. It allows you to learn about openings that may not be widely advertised if they are advertised at all. There is no one size fits all method when it comes to networking, but there are a few suggestions we can make. For example, on LinkedIn, a number of employers, HR, recruiters, and talent acquisition professionals who use LinkedIn is astronomical. I can tell you since starting my job here, I have had more connections on LinkedIn than I've had in the 10 years I've been on LinkedIn because I didn't realize at that point in time how many people utilize LinkedIn for specific networking and job opportunities. Not only are they posting potential jobs, but they're sharing advice from their point of view on job seekers and the hunt for employees. This gives a leg up to many job seekers who might be struggling. Also, by connecting with these individuals, you will have an inside look at upcoming positions and the changes in the company. In-person career fairs. We cannot stress this enough when it comes to networking. Career fairs are flourishing right now with the workforce. And what's even better, it's the job seeker's opportunity to put a face to a name. Many job seekers will apply for a job and sit and wait for an email on whether they were accepted or denied. This is rather unproductive and does not show initiative. Rather, a suggestion is to apply for a position you want, then look and see if the company will be attending any local career fairs. Then make it a point to visit that employer in person, letting them know of your application and ask if they have a moment to talk about the job. Sometimes recruiters are ready to conduct on the spot interviews and you may just get the job right then and there. I can tell you, we have career fair, we have recruiting events here on a daily basis. Multiple times have I had job seekers come in and look at our calendar and say, oh, well, I put an application in with this company, but I never heard back from them. First thing that I tell them is then come in and talk to them. Let them know that you put your application in and then more than likely they'll be able to put your application up right in front of them and conduct an interview with you right then and there. We've seen it happen, and we've seen people walk out of here with jobs starting the next day. Skill sets. It's never too late to learn something new. Many jobs in today's labor market require new skills that some job seekers may or may not have or are lacking updated knowledge in. Luckily, there are tons of programs out there that offer a job seeker the ability to obtain these skills at little to no cost. Recently, Lackawanna County and the state of Pennsylvania procured a learning program called Metrics Learning, or for the state, it's called Skill Up. This program is completely free to utilize and the world's leader in e-learning courseware in business, desktop, and IT. The best part is these courses can be taken at your own pace. We also have on the job training. So a lot of employers will offer what's called an OJT. So if you currently are working with somebody, I would suggest reaching out to your employer and see if they have an OJT program where you can start building your skill set. Or if you're applying for a new job, see if they're in an OJT program and then let them know, I'm very interested in building my skill set in that situation. LinkedIn also offers online skill assessments for individuals looking to highlight specific skill sets or those looking to find out exactly where they need a little bit more help. Currently, unemployed and receiving assistance from the county or the state, there is a program through the PA Career Link called WIOA, where you can qualify to be sent to an approved training course at a local institution. The possibilities are endless when it comes to obtaining, maintaining, and updating your skill set. 
Next, I want to discuss knowing your worth. When putting in an application for a job, do not be afraid to put a reasonable salary range. Salaries are negotiable, but you know what your skill sets are and a realistic expectation can be set. Of course, if you have limited experience and skills and are asking to enter an entry level position at $100,000 a year, you may need to rethink your salary expectations or even better, update your skill sets. Many websites today will offer salary range for positions within a company. And if you follow the steps mentioned previously and tailored your resume and application specific to the job, you can put that salary range in. I can tell you we utilize a program called the labor market information. And if you're ever looking for a decent salary range for a position that you may currently be in or you may be looking into going to, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to advise you on that information. We can go from entry level all the way up to experienced. We could even tell you what type of degree you need, whether you need on the job training for it, whether you need a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, an associate's, or even just a certification. Next, save time by being prepared. Make applying more efficient for you. Earlier, we mentioned file types to use to save your resume. To assist in making your job application process not only easier, but quicker, using the Word document to copy and paste details is the best method. Even though, you, even though many online job applications do not require a resume nowadays, they may also ask you to input the information into an application. Rather than spend 20 minutes filling out each category with the information already outlined in your resume, simply pull open that Word document, copy and paste in 10 minutes. What also, what's also nice about this is that if the fillable application is asking for specific information not outlined in your resume, you can edit, you can edit the resume right then and there and add the information and then reload your resume to the application site. A lot of application sites will allow you to review your application and your resume prior to submission. So when you're going through that fill me out application, even though you've already uploaded your resume, like I said, they may be asking for things you didn't list on your resume. Go back into your resume, make those changes, update it, Go back into the resume section, get rid of the one that you uploaded and reload the one that's required in the information. Do we have any questions? I don't see any. So I honestly never knew you had to put your resume in a PDF. I always kept it in a word, but that makes total sense. Well, I mean, you, you would know this as a, you know, professional, you open up those word documents yes. and sometimes they're not protected. So right. then you're opening right. it, you're reading it. And let's just say you get easily distracted. Oops. Now I just deleted somebody's word. I just added something in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. If you submit it directly to the person as a PDF, it completely avoids the chances of anything being edited, removed, or changed, which could honestly affect somebody getting a job. And at the end of the day, you have no idea that you're the one that did it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and I also didn't know, um, I guess now it's a lot different from when I left college and was looking for jobs, but I didn't know uh, the keywords that you had mentioned. That's so smart. Absolutely. Uh, and what's great, too, is, as I said, with the applicant tracking system, they they're programmed to look for specific words. So it, even if you do just a little bit of a Google search and you say, like, what are the best keywords to put into my resume or you pull open the job description and you pull keywords from that job description and put them into your resume, 
the applicant tracking system is already prepared to look for those specific words. And more than likely, you'll be passed on to the next phase for qualification than somebody who doesn't do that research. And that's amazing because, you know, back in the day, I think, you know, paper wise, I think someone had to physically go through these. Now it's more of a computerized where they're looking for keywords. So that's really important to know. Right, absolutely. And, and that's the big thing too, is today everything is technology, which that was the big key point of saving your resume as a Word document or a PDF, you know, right. learning the applicant tracking system, learning how to, you know, make your job application easier is you're learning computer skills. I've had so many more, I've had so many mature workers walk into this office. I can tell you my caseload is all mature workers. It's anybody that's 40 and older. Um, and the first thing they say to me is, I was not raised with technology. Right. I know how to open my computer. I know how to use my email, but I know nothing else. And that's the situation at hand is so, so many jobs today are computer-based. Technology runs our world. So we offer here at the Career Link, we have the digital literacy program. So they come in and they teach basic computer skills. But as long as you're going through and you're learning Microsoft Word, you know your email, you can easily grasp some knowledge on file types and things like that, you're already a step ahead of the game. That must be challenging though. So, so you're an older person applying and all this stuff is, is new for us, even you know myself. I can't imagine having to relearn all this new stuff that you have to know now, right? Absolutely. And it does cause a lot of stress for our mature workers. I mean, somebody who's, I can tell you, I was raised in that medium era where computers were just starting to become a thing, but I was still learning cursive. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, I have, I have nieces and nephews who have no idea what I write sometimes because it's in cursive. Right. They're not taught cursive anymore as curriculum. And there are things, though, that they can do on a computer system. And I have an IT background. I worked in IT for 10 years before coming here. And they teach me things I didn't know before. So the mature workers are coming in, though, that were never raised with computers. You know, they may have been, you know, a teenager in the 80s or in their 20s in the 80s when computers were really just becoming a thing. But there wasn't so much to it that we have today. So now they're coming in the office and saying, I really don't know how to do any of this. It, you mentioned Excel, Microsoft Excel, you mentioned Microsoft Access, even mentioning PowerPoint itself. And they look at you like you're speaking Chinese, but it's not their fault. They just weren't raised with it. So it's almost like they're starting from scratch. Exactly. And that's why we offer the short-term um, opportunities with the metrics, the skill up, the digital literacy courses. Um, I can tell you there's probably about 16 participants that come in for our digital literacy course here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they are all mature job seekers. You know, I, I rarely see somebody that might be in their 20s walking in the store looking to learn about computers. Wow. And it's, 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 it's crazy to think that we don't think that way, right? So so we don't know that the older generation doesn't know how to use certain things that now they have to know. Absolutely. And it, it is a little disheartening because they are, they're our frontiers. They're the ones that hit that pavement running before we did when it came to the workforce. So mm -hmm. when they come in here and they're overly stressed because they know they still have a couple more years that they have to work and they can't fulfill that job description that's being asked of them, but they know they can do the job because they did it before computers existed, they get discouraged, you know, and that's where it comes down to teaching them just a little bit more on the skill sets. And then we go through, and we update their resume. Once we've done that, as long as they say, you know, beginner for Microsoft Word, a lot of administration jobs, even that's all they're asking for. Do you know how to work Excel? Do you know how to do your email? Can you use a calendar? And do you know how to type documents? As long as we have that information in there and can prove that with the updated resumes, a lot of these mature workers are then getting the job because, okay, we know you have the knowledge. 
oh, look, you also did this job 20 years without computers existing. <laughs> right. You know? Does anyone else have any questions for Liz? I don't think so. I know we were we were trying to get this to go for an hour and I do apologize. Oh, it's totally it's absolutely fine. This is great. This was great information. Um definitely, you know, scratching the surface on what to need to know now. Um and and not knowing that, you know, you're right. A lot of these jobs are computer, you know, computer based or we need to learn certain things like Excel and Word, which to us comes so easy because we use it every day, but you know, the older generation didn't. Right. And what's really fantastic too, Victoria, is when you reached out to me and I started working on this project and the presentation, um, I had a couple of more job seekers. As you, as you know, most of the college kids will be graduating within the next two to three months. Um, so a lot of our local universities, our, our trade schools, our tech colleges, I'm receiving resumes from these students that are wanting to come out and get a job. The one thing that I can tell anybody that may be listening to this who is a current student at university, online school, trade school, don't over-design your resume. I'm, I'm seeing resumes that are coming in with their big display picture on the center on the top of their resume um, with these giant chunky blocks of like colorful and like water prints in the background of like their their signal from their university. And I had to explain to them that once you submit this into an applicant tracking system, you're automatically gonna be denied. Only because the ATS, well, it, it can't read in those blocks. Those online applicant programs, they're not designed to read your qualifications in a big orange block. So, I've been helping a lot of these students redesign their resumes to a more simplistic means. Just simple two-page document, Times New Roman, 11 to 12 point font. Understandable as a student, you don't have working experience in the field in which you want to apply. So go in and take some of the knowledge that you've earned from courses. I can tell you, I actually have a degree in criminal justice and I have not, I've never worked in criminal justice, but here's the thing. I can read somebody's body language. I can listen to somebody's voice and, and hear what they're saying and what they're telling me. And it was things that I learned in my investigative course. So what I did is I pulled certain skills out of the coursework that I had and listed those in my resumes. So that's a big key note to, as a student who's applying for a job that you've never actually worked in before, is look at your coursework and then pull knowledge from your your coursework. You know, different, maybe you've done a project on something. Make sure you list that in your resume. I can tell you, I did a huge presentation on the differences between, you know, rural areas and urban areas when it comes to police force and things like that. And it taught me analytics. It taught me forecasting. And when you look at a job description, people don't realize that. When you are doing research projects, you're being taught analytics. You're being taught how to put things into a document and display it appropriately. Because I can tell you right now, data is everything. <laughs> they want quantifiable data when it comes down to applying for a job. How much money did you save? How, you know, how many years did you do this? Did you help recruit, obtain, and succeed how many employees those are things that you want to put in your resume as well data is everywhere in the workforce today i agree it is well i so appreciate all of your feedback and knowledge it really it goes a long way especially when you're looking to update your resume or looking for a job sometimes you don't know these certain things that, that may, you know, force your resume to, to move forward to the next set of eyes. So I really appreciate it, Liz. Oh, absolutely. And I thank you guys so much for having me on today. Uh, I do apologize that this did run shorter than anticipated. And You're I think it's fine. just because I've done it so many times now that it's, it just flows like it's nothing for me now. 
No, you do a great job. I really appreciate it. And, and we're, we're looking forward to sharing this with our members. So this will be up on our, our website. So, you know, people can view it after, you know, we're, we're done with this session and look forward to hopefully partnering, partnering together again in the future. And that would be fantastic. And Victoria, just a heads up to, we, oh, sorry. Just, just how now, um, somebody who now is trying to get back into the workforce, should they just contact CareerLink, make an appointment? How do they? We, we're currently touch? open to the public. Uh, mm -hmm. We have multiple career advisors on staff. So all they need to do is walk in the door, advise our front desk staff that they are looking for a job or looking to further their career. Maybe they're looking for training. Maybe they're looking to better their skill sets. As soon as they let our receptionist know, our front desk staff, they know exactly who they need to call. They could walk in the door and be sitting with somebody within two, three minutes. That's Thank great. You. We do actually have a career fair coming up if anybody is interested in attendance. Um, my counterpart and myself um, will be gathering. It will have about five to eight different local employers to Lackawanna County that'll be attending. And it's actually an inclusion career fair where it, we're trying to highlight employers who are open to hiring people with disabilities, um, people with language barriers, people who have no experience whatsoever in the field and have on the job training contracts where they can learn the job by going and being employed there. So we're really hoping that this will help with the individuals that are in our area who feel like they just can't get their foot in the door these employers that we're looking to have here are open to hiring anybody at this point in time. And it's not just, a, okay, we're just gonna bring you in because we need bodies. It's that they want to also give these individuals that chance to come in and be employed and help the development of our workforce here in Lackawanna County. That's fantastic, thank you. Any information on that, please send to us. We can share with everyone as well. Fantastic. I will actually let my counterpart know. She has all of the wonderful flyers. She does all the great, all the buses that you see for the PA career link, all of the great signage. My counterpart is the one who designs all that. She's phenomenal at it. So I'll definitely have her reach out to you guys. Fantastic. Well, Liz, thank you again. And looking forward to helping uh, our career, pushing everyone getting back to, you know, knowledge of getting back to the workforce and helping them you know, the path to that success. So I appreciate it. Well, thank you again, Victoria, and to the Chambers for this wonderful collaboration. I truly do hope that this helps with our workforce development. Yes, thank you so much. Everyone have a great day.